Welcome back to another episode of Pronouncing German Words Wrong. Hansa Kampfwagen 2 aus dot f aus f the panzer kampf wagen 2 got it uh, in 176 scale from ravel join me as i take a look inside the box and find out what this one is like hi i'm matt and you're watching model minutes on the outside of the box we've got a very interesting image of two of these tanks fighting in the desert you can see that one's in the dark gray color and there's another one here in the yellow color and i've already seen inside of it and that's an indication that there are two different paint schemes that you can do with this kit up here it tells us it's 176 scale and we've got a dimension that it's about 6.3 centimeters long or is that wide i don't know it just has one measurement on there so that's probably the length the edges of the box the long edge here has information um, about the actual Panzer Kampf Wagen and also the different colors of the Ravel paint system that you might need to get. The other side tells us that this is a product suitable for those aged 10 years and older and it's also got some addresses. The ends of the box feature the same image from the front and also the skill number which is a skill number three. I find that Ravel skill numbers have to be taken with a pinch of salt because they don't necessarily respond to how difficult the kit is to build, but more so the number of parts inside the kit. It's something like between 10 and 20 is a skill level one, up to 20, up to like 50 is like a skill level two, 50 onwards is three, over 100 is four, like that. So it doesn't necessarily mean how hard it could be because you could have a skill level one, which is actually really difficult, and a skill level five with 100 pieces, which is really easy to do. On the back, Oh, it says it here. It tells you about the skills here. Five categories. Number one, easy snap kits. Two is a simple kit of about 30 parts. Three has up to 100. Four is over 150 parts. And five is 150 or more. So, like I said, take that with a pinch of salt. It could be difficult, it might not be. So this is a skill level three, so it's going to have um, over 30 parts. Over 30, but less than 100. There's also some images on here of different kits that you can buy in the range, and they've highlighted uh, various tanks and armoured vehicles, and there's a field gun there, um, because obviously if you've bought this, you're probably going to be more interested in buying more armoured vehicles, so they haven't put any aircraft or anything like that on the back. There's also an image here of some different uh, paints and glues that you might want to get. So let's get inside the box and see what we're presented with. As usual, the first thing I'm going to look at are the instructions. And on the front, we've got a image of the kit in its final form. It's in black and white, which is unhelpful as you can't really decide what colors you might need from it. Uh, but it shows us it's in a sort of diorama setting. So this does actually come with a little diorama base for you to build up and a couple of figures, which I think is great. Um, it's a very interesting thing to have. Not many kits that I've built. I don't think any of the kits I've built so far have actually had that. So it's a really good inclusion. Again, more information about the actual Panzer Kampfwagen. And we flip over the page and we're presented with multilingual safety information and also a key to the different symbols you might encounter during the build. Flip over and now we're presented with the very annoying paint system. I find. What I've already done, and you can see on the screen, is that I've already written on some of the colours that I'm going to be using. So the ones with ticks next to are actually the Ravel ones that I've got, and the alternatives are the numbers for Humbrol or something else that I'm going to use instead of. They're sort of like for like. Later on, when I come to build this one, I'll actually go through and replace all of the letters with the numbers that I need. On to the different stages of the uh, construction. At the very top, we've got a sprue map, which is absolutely brilliant because it helps you locate things in case you misplace them or don't know which one's which or can't necessarily read the numbers. And then we start off uh, by constructing the hull of the tank and we add the various wheels um, and then the tracks. The tracks are like these rubbery ones, so probably not going to be fantastic, but it has a slightly different manner of affixing than the airfix ones and these seem to just pass through and twist whereas the airfix ones had to be glued or melted together. The turret is then assembled and there's quite a few pieces for the turret 
and it would seem when you get to stage eight that if you don't glue it in you should be able to turn it freely. We had more separate parts to the top of the tank up until stage 11 where the tank should be complete. So the tank isn't too difficult to build, it should be quite easy. It would probably be quite suitable for a beginner to do. We've got two steps here on how to paint the figures. So we've got one chap who's holding a submachine gun and another chap who's about to throw a grenade. And I believe that they're painted in sort of desert yellow colors. Finally, steps 14 and 15 is the assembly and painting of the diorama base and it has a sort of desert style house and the last step 15 is where they position the two different figures and the tank on top of it. So you could glue this if you wanted to or you could uh, just simply position them on there. So 15 stages, not particularly difficult to do. Uh, the instructions are relatively clear. There is quite a lot going on in each step and I feel like they could have expanded it a little bit, but to be honest, these shouldn't be too difficult to follow. Steps 16 and 17 are just the two different painting schemes. One is for uh, a Panzerkampfwagen of the Panzer Regiment number no. 8 in North Africa in 1941-1942 and I believe that one is painted in... Uh, what is it painted in? A, let's find out. A is Africa Brown. And then the other one, B, will be Tank Grey. So you've got two choices. You've got one in a brown colour and one in a grey colour. So that's the instructions. I would have liked to have seen the painting instructions in colour, but to be honest, the tank's painted in one colour only, so it's not going to be too difficult to get wrong. Another thing that's included with most or practically all the Revo kits that I've seen are these sort of safety warning sheets. So if this is your first time, make sure you read this, but it gives you information, um, you know, that it's not suitable for those under eight years old, uh, adult supervision is required, wash your hands, uh, keep chemicals out of the reach of children and so on and so forth. Let's take a look at the decals. So we get this tiny little decal sheet and it's split into two halves. You've got one set of decals for the sort of sand colored one and you've got a set of decals for the dark gray one. And they seem to be well printed. I can't really see any errors or printing problems there. They seem to be quite well done. The large sort of Arabic lettering that's for going on the building. It's not actually annotated in the instructions where you're supposed to put that one, but there is a it's sort of able to see it in the picture on the front of the instructions. So just watch out for that when you come to do it. I don't normally have any problems with Ravel transfers, so they should go on to the model quite well. So now it's time to take a look at the sprues. They come in a plastic bag, which is very well folded up and stuck together. So let's get these bits out. The first thing I notice with these sprues is they feel quite firm. The plastic's quite firm and smooth, but it doesn't feel greasy. So that's quite good. You might need to give this a wash purely because it's quite an old kit and we'll talk about that in a minute. But generally it doesn't feel to be too bad. I can't see any uh, sort of parts that have failed to be reproduced. There is a bit of flash in places, but generally the molding is quite good. On this first sprue, we've got parts of the demolished house, along with other elements of the tank, such as the top of the tank, the bottom of the hull and elements of the turret. And they are molded to quite a good condition. There's a reasonable amount of detail on here, which is quite nice to see. On to the next sprue now. And we've got the large diorama base, and that's quite well done too. Obviously, some very careful painting will be required to make that look particularly good. We've got the two figures, and they seem to be quite well done as well. Obviously, I've got a bit of a bugbear for figures, but these are actually not too bad. They're some of the better ones that I've seen from kits of this sort of period. And then progressing on, we've got all of the various wheels uh, for the underside of the tank. There is a little bit of flash in places that will need to be cut off and removed, but actually it's not too bad. 
The last thing to take a look at are these rubbery tracks, and I'm not a fan of these, but at least these have been well moulded, and there is a surprising amount of detail on them. Hopefully they'll go onto the model all right, and they won't look a bit weird with this um, sort of twist and lock-in um, system that they've decided to use for that. Anyway, I'm sure you'd like to know more about the actual kit. So this particular kit dates from 2008 and retails for about five or six pounds in the United Kingdom. But if you remember, I actually got this one for uh, a Christmas gift of 2019. So it's about 12 years old now, this, this type of, this particular boxing. This entered the Ravel range in 1997 as part of a gift set or a model set. Uh, but this wasn't the first time this kit had been seen on the market. It's actually a matchbox kit, uh, which dates back to 1976. So I think it does sort of show elements of its age in the fact that there are some bits of flash and the moulding probably isn't up to today's standard. But that being said, it's still got really good moulding quality for a kit of its age. And it should hopefully turn out to be a really nice model. So let's just do a little recap. You get two yellowy sort of sprues, which are molded to quite a good quality, a little bit of flash to get rid of, but nothing to worry about. And some rubber tracks, which are done quite well as well. A small decal sheet, which seems absolutely fine and shouldn't present any problems. The standard safety warning sheet and a set of instructions, which should be easy to follow. And it's, it's helped out by the fact that the painting would be quite simple on this one because the tank is going to be one of two colours. Um, but I really wish that Ravel didn't use the painting system that they do. And also this was printed in colour. And all of that's contained inside a box with some really nice artwork on the front. So let me know, is this a kit that you'd get for yourself? What do you think of this one? And if you'd like to see me build this one, make sure you put a comment down below. As always, honourable mention to my patrons over on Patreon, a massive thank you to you guys for the support that you give me. Um, all of your money goes back into the channel, helping me to get more paints and kits and things like that that I need to continue building models. To find out more about what pledging your support means and the perks it gets you, including early access to videos and behind the scenes stuff, take a look at the link in the description. Don't forget you can also connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and my Discord server. All that's left to say is thanks for watching and I'll see you all on the workbench again next time. So today I'm taking a quick look inside the box of this, the Panzer Cam, Cam Wagon, Kampf, Panzer Kampfwagen, Panzer Kampfwagen, Kampf, the Panzer Pamp, the Panzer Kampfwagen, the Panzer Kampfwagen,